Good day, Mr. Briggs. Please select an agent for your next mission. Scanning Imperial Agent Database. Qualified Agent Found. Agent ID, Matthews Range. Agent Cover Story, Director, Mongoose Publishing. Details as follows. Greetings, travelers, and welcome to Traveler Mayday Mayday 2022, sponsored by Cyborg Prime Games. You can find me at cyborgprime.com or by searching for my name in the Facebook search tool, or find a link in the video description below. Thanks for joining us for the fourth annual Mayday Mayday Traveler Day event. It's a day we celebrate Traveler and all its additions and offshoots for all the fun times it's given us around the gaming table with friends and family. I'm your host, Frank Zuccardi, also known as Cyborg Prime. And today I'm happy to introduce our guest, Matthew Sprange of Mongoose Publishing. Welcome, Matt. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming back. Uh, how many times have you been with us now? Is this the third time? Third time, I think, yeah. Fantastic. Thanks for your uh, continued support. It's always fun. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself. Who are you and what do you do? Uh, well, I'm Matthew Sprange. I'm the Managing Director of Mongoose Publishing. Uh, what do I do? Uh, bum around the office, mostly. Um, <laughs> good. Try to make sure everyone else here has everything they need to get their um, work done. And now and again, I try very hard to uh, edit traveler books. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, where are you from? Where did you grow up? And where do you live now? Okay. Um, well, I live in a... Um, a town called Swindon, which is about 70 miles west or just to the left of London. Um, I have uh, lived in different parts of the country, but um, uh, I was born in Swindon. I've come back to Swindon. I'm probably going to die in Swindon the way things are going. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I've spent uh, most of my time here. Um, this is where Mongoose HQ is set up in a, a place called... Uh, Gorse Hill, which is one of the uh, little regions of uh, of Swindon. Um, we're about a mile or two away from the town centre. Um, and there's uh, an awful lot of pubs around here. <laughs> <laughs> Swindon sounds like a charming place. Uh, yeah, you, 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 there will be a lot of people disagreeing with that. I, <laughs> I don't know the reference myself, but for Americans, I have heard that Swindon can be likened to Fresno, whatever okay. that means. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to either. I've been to California once. I enjoyed it. Uh, it, was, it was fantastic. I'd like to go back. I have family there, but uh, I wouldn't know that reference either. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I like that there's a gaming company and pubs. So <laughs> for me, it's attractive. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, one of your big hobbies is uh, is gaming. But do you have any other hobbies aside from gaming? Uh, in theory, yes. Um... In the past, I've um, scratch built and flown radio control planes, but um, I'm lacking a workshop at the moment. Uh, the airfield, uh, the club that I flew from has moved airfields. So I haven't had a, a chance to do that in the past few years. So when you're building um, planes from scratch like that, I guess there's templates and and and, uh, and jigs that hold the, the, put the wings on just right? Or how, how can it's, it's you make sure that the thing flies? <laughs> Based on your uh, yeah. kid or whatever. <laughs> one of the things, I mean, you think when you're building a plane, everything has got to be, you know, absolute uh, minimum tolerances for uh, for error or uh, misalignment. Uh, frankly, once you build them, you'll be amazed at what can fly. I mean, seriously, you, you put a big enough propeller on a brick, that's going to go through the air. Hmm. Uh, it might not go through the air well, and that's where the, you know, the skill comes in. Sure. Um uh, most of which I've I've never really really attained. Um, no, I just liked the uh, nice looking planes that uh, fly through the air in my garage. I've got um, uh, a Spitfire six foot wingspan, um, four stroke engine. Looks great when it flies. But uh, as I say, we we used to have the best flying point in the whole of Europe, just outside Swindon, but it's uh, it's been shut down now. So. Uh, I believe they're now flying from some farmer's field, which doesn't sound so much fun for me. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, cool. They used to have the they used to have um, a complete airfield, um, old RAF place. So you you were flying and taking off from uh, a proper runway. Oh. Um, but the uh, the guys from um, you know Clarkston that lot from uh, the Grand Tour, no. uh, the uh, the Amazon series. 
Uh, I haven't seen it. But um, go on. It's a car show. They they basically took over the place, and we're not allowed to go there anymore. <laughs> I see. It's a massive uh, tarmac or a black top or whatever asphalt. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I say it's it's got um, uh, the full runway system of an RAF base. Mm. Is that made of cement or tar? Uh, whatever runways are normally made out. Of. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, no, it's a proper, proper military. Uh, air base kind of thing. Okay, gotcha. Do you have any, uh, well, actually, you've already told us that your favorite sci-fi inspiration comes from Star Wars. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember one of my latest memories is sitting in a cinema um, and watching A New Hope. It wasn't called that back then, but um, well, no, it wasn't episode four back then. Uh, watching A New Hope as um, uh, well, as I was a tiny, tiny kid, I can Sitting here now, I can uh, remember the stormtroopers crashing through the, uh, the Corvette at the uh, beginning. Um, and that probably, seeing that probably damaged me in some way because uh, I've been uh, into the fantasy and sci-fi ever since in a, in a big, major way. That opening scene did make an impression on me as well. <clears throat> I had never seen anything like that in a movie uh, until that. But time. no one had. That, that was the thing. Yeah, I mean, I'd seen war movies and stuff, but I never saw anything like people trying to hold a corridor against like a breaching in the wall. I mean, it was crazy. So, what about it? About uh, what about Star Wars though grabs you uh, and and uh, hooks you and inspires you? Uh, continues to inspire you. I've spent um, a part of a lifetime. Thinking about that, I, I still haven't got a good answer. There's just something very magical about uh, Star Wars that uh, keeps pulling me back. I'm prepared to admit that a lot of it might be nostalgia on my part, rather than viewing the content as the absolute gold standard of uh, drama and fiction. If, if you got me drunk enough, I, I might admit to that. <laughs> uh, but other words, otherwise, I'll be in full Star Wars mode. And um, to the point where I will fight anyone who disagrees that The Last Jedi is the very best Star Wars film of the lot. All right. All right. Oh, and um, you mentioned... <laughs> <I'll fight. laughs> I don't want to fight anybody. <laughs> I, I like all the uh, I like all uh, science fiction properties, more or less. So um, I'm good with every, with all of them. My primary ones are Star Wars and Star Trek myself. But I also like, um, I really have a, <laughs> I like Atlantis, Star, uh, Stargate Atlantis, but not the regular Stargate. I don't know, I'm weird. So um, <laughs> uh, you mentioned um, in our last conversation that uh, you have some pets. I do. I've got uh, two guinea pigs, uh, Sophie Pig and Maisie Pig. And uh, what, what made you decide on guinea pigs as pets? Uh, they just made me laugh. Uh, they, they're faintly ridiculous animals. Do they um, play or... Um... Together. They do. They uh -huh. play tag with each other. Uh, they always seem to be in some sort of existential crisis. Anybody who owns guinea pigs will know exactly what I'm talking about, the expression they have when they go through that. Um, and uh, I have to figure out, if I got two pairs of guinea pigs, I wouldn't need a lawnmower. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, they're really good at uh, keeping down the lawn. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we use goats where, I live, where, where we live. <laughs> People have pet goats. And they keep them in like a dog kennel that has no floor, and then they just move it around the yard. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 we, we had goats when I was growing up. Yes, they're uh, nature's lawnmower. The Nubians. Yes. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, your first uh, RPG and how you uh, started playing. Um, that was uh, way back in primary school, um, about 40 years ago. Um, started playing the old um, fighting fantasy and uh, lone wolf game books. Um, and then one day we had uh, a teaching assistant come in. He, he saw what we were doing and says, stick around. I'll, I'll show you something that um, uh, you're going to want to see. And uh, we ended up playing Tunnels and Trolls. Instantly hooked, um, pressured uh, my parents to pick up the red box Dungeons and Dragons uh, in those uh, summer holidays, mm -hmm. and that was kind of the course set. <laughs> I've never uh, played Tunnels and Trolls. How does it uh, compare to uh, early D and D? It's more, to be honest, it's more like the game books than um, D and D itself. Although it's got the open RPG format. Um, I mean, I haven't, I haven't played it for more than thirty years. Oh, so okay, so you're... <laughs> <laughs> it's so far away. <laughs> So dim. Um, 
you started playing uh, D&D then, and what got you hooked about role-playing games in general? I honestly don't know. I mean, I've, I've always been the kind of person who cannot stand up in front of a room and talk to a bunch of people. Uh, but I never had a problem being the games master, um, which was fortunate because no one else wanted to be games master. So that was uh, that was my role through my teenage years. I don't know. There's <laughs> why do I like RPGs? Um, world building, the social aspect, the storytelling. I mean, you got the old joke that uh, uh, they're always going to be better than video games because it uh, has a much better graphics card. <laughs> yes. Well. <clears throat> I like, uh, I think it's, uh, for me, it's the, uh, it, it always inspires my imagination for something. So I, I like to, uh, I like, and I also like the cooperative storytelling aspects Indeed. of, of, uh, of RPGs. So how did you go from, how did you go from, uh, playing D and D into traveler? Do you remember your first experience with traveler and what you thought of it? Well, that was, that was quite a short journey. I mean, from D and D. I uh, went on to Games Workshop's Judge Dread game, and Traveller was the uh, the third. Um, about the same time we got into uh, AD and D, the the first edition back then. Uh, Traveller was started off with the um, uh, the actual starter set, not the little black box, the um, the more A4 or legal sized uh, box set. Um, I can't remember the. Uh, uh, the, the the bluish divided uh, cover on the front, um, and you got the two three books inside of it with mission to Mithril. Um, yeah, that was that was my starting point for Traveller. And what and uh, and 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 what about that hooked you? Was you like, wow, this is like Star Wars, or um, were you just thinking about you know its own setting and what you, the adventures you can have in there, or uh, what kind of? I think you? it was its own. Yeah, I think it was its own setting. Um, I mean, at the time I was, I was creative energy wise, I was pouring a lot of effort into making my own D and D world. So with Traveller, already had a universe, so I just kind of um, gravitated towards that uh, and kicked off with the uh, uh, the old adventure books. And did you have a favorite career, or do you do you have one, or is it ever changing? Do you have a, a career of uh, du jour <laughs> that you like? Um, not back then, no. It was uh, something of everything. Um, these days, uh, when I do get to play, I tend to gravitate towards the uh, dilettante specialization of the noble career, mostly because I do, I'm do. i rather attracted to the idea of creating an absolutely worthless human being, you know, somebody famous just for being famous kind of idea and seeing how they uh, manage to cope in Traveller. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So I like the uh, uh, entertainer class. Um, like you said, being famous just for being famous. Oh, look, they're so and so. Why are they so famous? I don't know, but there they are. <laughs> well, entertainer is a career I normally fail to get into because you get this idea, right? I'm going to create a character who's going to be the galaxy's greatest rock star, and it never turns out that way. <laughs> So uh, this year's theme is agents. Can you think of any mm. uh, sci-fi agents that you like, maybe from Star Wars or any any you know sci-fi uh, setting? I'm just wondering. Here, you mentioned Star Wars. Is Boba Fett going to be an agent? I suppose so. He's a bounty hunter, right? That covers bounty hunters. Thinking about the universes, uh, Babylon Five, uh, Garibaldi. Yep. Um, and uh, I suppose in a way, the Rangers could be. Yes, I suppose so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Highly specialized, but yeah, on those lines. Um, the obvious one, of course, is Deckard in uh, Blade Runner. Yes, yes, that's been uh, a lot of people's responses. Actually, that's that's I think the first one that pops to a lot of people's minds. And also, I don't know yeah. the character's name, but the the Sean Connery character from Out. I was just about to mention that. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Do you know his name? The character's name? I don't know. No. I, I kind of. I must have kind of switched off Sean Connery in his latter years. <laughs> you didn't like Zardoz? <laughs> <laughs> but it's sci-fi. So, <laughs> yeah, Zardoz, don't look it up if you haven't seen it. <laughs> so uh, tell me how you went from uh, traveler player to uh, traveler producer. Well, um, just just trying to get the timeline right in my head. I mean, we'd uh, we'd started Mongoose with the um, D20 license, 
um, starting off at the first year, basically producing support materials for uh, Dungeons and Dragons by another name. Um, no, nobody was fooled; it was for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and we'd already started looking into various licenses. We um, basically had a brainstorming session in a, in a pub um, about what uh, what universes we might like to uh, pursue um, to make a make a game from. And the first one that cropped up was Judge Dread, and we subsequently found out that the new owner for 2080 comic, which includes Judge Dread, uh, was working in oxford which is um, barely 20 miles away from us so we had a quick drive up there had a chat turns out he's an old role player um and so we got um uh, judge dread done on the back of that we were able to talk to warner brothers and hook babylon 5 and it was a little time after that we were taking stock we wanted to do something new and a golden rule at mongoose has always been we produce the games that we want to play ourselves and if there's no one here that isn't uh, passionate uh, about a project, then it doesn't matter how much money that project may or may not make. It doesn't get made. Uh, we, we were knocking around ideas again, and the uh, subject of travel came up, and I thought, oh, I remember that. I've got some fond memories there. Uh, we tracked down Mr. Miller, um, gave him a phone call, uh, say, this is us. Um, we'd quite like to um, uh, do Traveller uh, as a full RPG line. He said, well, I'm, I'm kind of working on something myself, to which I, uh, I said, uh, but I'm sorry to trouble you. He says, well, no, 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 well, wait a moment. Let's talk about this. And that's basically how the how our first edition of uh, Traveller came about. Um, we knew Mark was working on what would become T5, uh, but he saw that there was um, space for both games. So we ended up doing Traveller. Fantastic. That's a great story. Uh, when you were, if you don't mind me asking, when you um, were starting a game company, did you have to, uh, did you have a hard, did you have to secure financing from banks and did you have a hard time explaining to them, you know, what, what the money was for? No, we did. <clears throat> we started Mongoose on, um, there was me and my then business partner, Alex Fennell. Um, who I've known since primary school. In fact, I've mentioned before um, I was playing fighting fantasy and lone wolf books. Uh, it was Alex. I was I was sitting alongside when we were both playing them, um, and he had uh, he had just come out of the uh, uh, out of the army and was poking along the uh, what was back then the three uh, G market. I was bumming along as um, uh, a field engineer fixing computers and um, uh, and what have you. And we'd spoken before about about a year previously about starting up a, a games company together because neither of us really knew what we wanted to do, uh, knew what we wanted to do with our lives. We just knew that what we were doing wasn't it. And we were talking about a possible miniatures game, but uh, we knocked a, a few ideas around and decided that wasn't going to be the thing. So we kind of put everything on a back burner. A few months after I started hearing uh, about this new D20 thing, and I'd been out of um, the whole D&D RPG for quite a while, so I'd, I'd kind of missed the start of third edition. But we put some figures together. I said to Alex, you know, we could you know, have a swing at this. We had uh, £8,000, about $12,000 between us. Uh, we figured out that with that, we could uh, produce three books, release one a month, and do all three without needing any money from distributors uh, whatsoever. Uh, at the time, we figured out that it would take 60 to 90 days to pay us. They're, they're actually better than that. But uh, we knew we could survive for three months um, with three separate releases, and we figured that was worth having a punt on. So that's that's how Mongu started. Fantastic! That's a great story. Uh, how awesome to start a business with your friend from childhood <laughs> that you've been gaming with all that time. I mean, that's a lot of people's dreams. Pretty much. I mean, he, he, yeah, it's, he'd spent. Um, I mean, talking about uh, RPGing in um, my teenage years, he was present through uh, just about all of that. Right. Um, he disappeared off around the world for uh, a few years, uh, being in the army. He was in the uh, Signals Regiment. And when he came back, he had this idea that he could make loads of money in the 3G market. And I said, no, you'd be better off with RPGs, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
right, so uh, tell us what you've been up to for the past year. Um, it looks like uh, Mongoose has been producing quite a bit of stuff. I see many releases um, in the past year. Um, why, don't you t- and, uh, why don't you tell us what you've been up to? Have you gone to uh, any conventions yet? Is the coast clear for that? or? Uh, no, I mean, we're, we're basically on Plague Island at the moment. Right. Um, we managed to hit, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, we managed to hit one in every 13 people in Britain had the virus. Um, we're currently, uh, it seems to be easing off now, it's currently one in 15 um, I last saw. I think we've still got uh, about 2,000 people a week dying from the virus. So, no, I'm not going to go any, anywhere near a convention. Oh, my at God, the I moment. didn't realize how bad it was. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I could get very political at this point. <laughs> 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 suffice, suffice to say that uh, I'm kind of hoping that um, uh, we'll be at Dragon Meat at the bottom end of this year. Uh, we were looking at doing Gen Con this year. It's, I think it's going to be next year. We're we're next up uh, in uh, uh, on your side of the pond. Mm, all right. Well, um, what about the productions that you finished up since uh, we've talked to you last? Yeah, there's been a lot. Um, at the end of whenever we get to the end of the year, we always have this goal that we're going to finish everything that's currently in production so we go into the new year absolutely clean on on projects and for 20 odd years we've completely failed every time <laughs> uh, last year we just about did it that's why you see you saw a whole flurry of traveler releases at the end of the year um it's because we drew a line and said right we're going to get our noses to the grindstone and we're going to finish each one of these in this order and magically we hope the uh production schedule will hold and this time it actually did we managed to do the new core rulebook update 2022 we managed to do the explorers edition which uh we always intended as a um one dollar pdf that gives you all the core rules for uh traveler we backed that up with what we call a christmas present for traveler um seth squats kelsey did rewrote or reimagined um uh the death station adventure we put that up on uh, drive through as a, a free gift um so now new travelers had uh the new updated core rule book all the explorer editions two different ways to get into traveler plus a full adventure to uh dive into straight away and on top of that we managed to do a music video for traveler <laughs> what <laughs> fantastic <laughs> that's a lot of stuff and well, that was on top of things like um, Third Imperium, 2300 AD, the Mercenary books. Um, there was, I mean, we spent about nine months gearing up to finish all of that. Uh, magically, this time, it, it worked. Wow, that's cool. Stay on target. Stay on target. <laughs> hey, we stayed on target. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. It's good to uh, be able to um, accomplish something that you've been trying to do for so long. It must have uh, been a great relief and a proud moment to see all that stuff uh, finally click in and be done by the end of the year as you intended. Oh, yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about some of those. Um, Let's start. uh, Let's start with uh, your 2300 AD um, aerospace engineers. We'll go in. We'll go in timeline order. Um, So 2300 AD, I used to love that game um yeah i used to buy everything that had to travel on it and so i got traveler 2300 and um yeah it's low tech traveler it's like um like the expanse i suppose um that's the feel i get out of it but it was kind of predates the expanse um uh, at any rate the uh i looked took a look over the uh the aerospace engineers handbook and uh, what a great uh, guide for building ships and stuff in the 2300 AD setting. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, well, um, 2300 um, principal writer and line developer for uh, for that universe at the moment is Colin Dunn, who's an absolute genius for this uh, this kind of thing. Um, and he's got a knack. <laughs> yeah. Um, We've had um, many, uh, should we say, spirited discussions um, because Colin 
wants to put absolutely everything into um, the universe, um, both in terms of contents and rules-wise. Um, and I'm always at the other end saying, that's great, Colin. People have actually got to play this game, though. Uh, it's not it's not meant to be a simulation. It's, it's a, a, a tabletop game. Um, and in the, uh, in the past, I've told him, thank you for sending in this manuscript. I don't think you're going to like um, how I've been butchering it. And he, he sends me a mail back. Don't worry, my, my soul is prepared. <laughs> um, but what that does is um, it gives 2300 its own very special feel, um, which makes it distinct from um, the charted space universe. In that everything feels just a little bit, um, a little bit more clunky, not in terms of the rules, but how... Uh, how you actually approach things um like uh, man, one of my favorites um talking about ships is um in traveler you're at the starport and you want to travel to um i don't know you want to travel to the moon say uh and you just say right we take off we fly to the moon and in a, a few minutes we'll be landing there but in uh, in 2300, you've got to get into orbit first. And you might not be able to do that with everything you're carrying in your ship. Um, I mean, what it basically boils down to is um, uh, what we call uh, burn points in the game. Um, so you've got a very, you've got a very simple method of how a ship gets, you know, off the ground. But it's the it's the feel it create uh, the feel it creates. So I mean, you you burn this much fuel, well, you you might not be coming down again. It's it's just something you've got to keep uh, an eye on. Um, you're not talking about um, uh, tracking like every uh, every point of oxygen, um, but it's just something that uh, sits on top of what you're doing, and it's always at the back of your mind. Um, it's just a nice way to handle the ships. I think it makes it feel like um, there's a lack of infrastructure in the universe for supporting ships because there's just not that, you know, major, what do I want to say, like ship co shipbuilding competition or they're expensive and they're big and like you say, clunky and um, out in space, if like something happens to your, you know, to your ship, you can't just call up somebody to come help you or, you know. <laughs> They expect another no, ship well, will come by in a few, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, well, that's it, I'm the, and that's like cranked up to eleven. I'm I'm currently um, editing um, the new, uh, the rewritten uh, Bayern campaign at the moment. Uh, that's been done by um, I hope I pronounce this right, Gavin Dady, and he's turned it from what was what once a sixty-four page was both source material and um, uh, an adventure or three. It's now going to be a, a big box set, it looks like, with uh, four books in it. That's um, going far beyond the, uh, the civilized space as humans see it, um, all the way to the, uh, to the Pleiades, which is, what, 450-odd something light years, I think. Um, so that is, that's a big stretch for 2300 AD. Um, uh, technology and as you say is uh, you kind of have to rely on yourself this little flotilla that's going out really does have to rely on itself uh, we had uh, a similar um idea with the um traveler deep night revelation campaign um also that was even further that's a uh, a uh, best uh, a 10-year trip um just uh, just going in one direction um and again it's gonna have to uh, figure out how to uh, cope without any supporting structure so um, well we always figured in deep night revelation the cruiser gets to its uh, destination like half its systems have been replaced by uh, alien tech or bodge jobs or uh, just anything to keep the thing flying mm -hmm. would you have any uh, new uh, aside from that that box set for 2300 sounds pretty pretty beefy uh do you have any other uh, expansions coming along for 2300 we do. We've already got written, edited, and just waiting for layout now. Um, uh, Tools for Frontier Living, which is basically the central supply catalog for 2300. Um, because they're using common systems now, you're going to find that everything in Tools for Frontier Living is also compatible with um, uh, Traveller. So you're going to have 
miles more equipment um, around the uh, the lower uh, tech levels uh, for your traveler games if you so choose. Uh, we've got Sandrine is just finishing the layout of Ships of the Frontier, which is kind of like the companion book for um, Aerospace Engineers Handbook. Uh, they were originally intended to be the same book, uh, much like uh, High Guard has both the design rules and uh, new ships. Uh, Colin uh, overwrote the uh, the book somewhat. Um, I was looking at thinking, no one's going to be able to carry this book if we make it just one volume. So we we split it down into two, so they're more manageable. Um, as well as that, I'm trying to think what they're uh, working on at the moment. Um, after Tools of Frontier Living, we've got um, uh, both a... Uh, full-blown campaign for 2300 and also uh, a colony builders uh, handbook um they're going to be further down the road but uh, those those are the next ones up to be done wow that sounds awesome i can't wait to see all that and, stuff. And, uh, sorry bayern as well of course there's uh, uh, that box set that's going to be um the next book uh, the next set that gets worked on after ships of the frontier oh after tools of frontier living uh, I'll have to look at the schedule. It's one of the two. <laughs> right. Matthew, that's a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, you're producing so much stuff. I mean, uh, I'm amazed and and uh, and delighted. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the other things that you've done uh, since we talked last time. There's a Mercenary uh, three-set book out. Or, um, let's talk about that. Yeah, that all came from um, uh, Kickstarter. And again, it's a good example of... Um, uh, why we pick certain projects to be done on Kickstarter for Traveller. I mean, the, the example or I always use is uh, what we did for the Great Rift. When we started the Kickstarter, the box had already been written. It was um, equivalent of 200 pages in a box, a uh, couple of um, Rift sectors, good to go. However, uh, what a Kickstarter allows us to do is expand on the uh expand on what we've already got and make it better without us having to worry about budgets at all or not so much so what the kickstarter allowed us to do was to take that 200 page equivalent box set turn it into what 400 ish odd pages plus three standalone adventures plus three i think um uh additional sectors to really start padding out the great rift and it just allows us to make um a, a better product for uh, no extra cost to the um, uh, to the travellers picking it up. Uh, in, indeed, they normally get um, a, a better deal out of it. So, I mean, they were uh, you backed um, uh, the Great Rift box set. You end up it being twice as large as it started, plus getting three standalone adventures. That's pretty good value. Mercenary was the same. We had the um, uh, all the three books in the box set um pretty much all written by the time we started the kickstarter but the kickstarter allowed us to add um a beginning mercenary adventure in the box set itself plus standalone adventures plus and this was the the crowning achievement three complete hardbacks on top of that so uh, yeah i mean that's that's why we do the kickstarters for traveler it's an opportunity for us to really go to 11 on a project without having to worry about if we're going to be eating just bread and cheese for the next six months because we've um, uh, <laughs> spent way too much money on artwork and additional pages. That's, uh, that's I've never uh, done a Kickstarter myself, but uh, I know lots of people who have uh, participated in them. And uh, like um, one of my players uh, did the Kickstarter for the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the 3D printed ships. And he's already mm -hmm. printed up like half of his uh, scout ship. He shows us his progress. And I'm like, damn, that thing is gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and then he was uh, kind enough to s send me some, uh, send me a, uh, a Beowulf free trader all painted up and everything that he printed. I'm so proud. It's so beautiful. <laughs> the, uh, that mercenary adventure uh, box set that comes with the uh, book one, two, and three, plus uh, an, uh, an adventure. and um, uh, am I missing out anything else that comes in that box? Uh, there's also uh, a white clean roster sheet for your um, to keep track of your uh, uh, actual troops. Right, right. Uh, so in the mercenary edition, uh, they introduced something called tickets. And uh, yeah, 
so I guess that's like a universal way of like listing the requirements for the missions. Yeah, it's it's basically um, a sort of standardized uh, method of presenting um, a contract to to the players. Um, what it, what it basically does, mercenary can be broken down. Mercenary adventures are broken down into um, uh, one or two different one of two different approaches. I mean, on the one hand, you're controlling um, a whole body of troops, um, and so uh, you will be working out uh, if they're properly supplied, if um, uh, how they're actually fighting, your basic tactics, and what have you. And it's all fairly abstract. Uh, I mean, you can play an entire ticket um, uh, just by making various uh, checks for your, for your forces, taking your casualties, uh, succeeding in the uh, ticket and collecting the rewards at the end. That's not always very interesting. What you can also do is um, basically break scenes down so it becomes more like a standard traveler adventure. Uh, where the, uh, the 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 main characters, the owners of the uh, mercenary unit, are doing all the normal things that travelers normally do, most mostly destroying cities, um, but they've got the backup of their um, own troops, which um, they can either fight alongside normally using the normal combat rules, um, or they can abstract what squad A, B, and Cs are uh, are actually doing so they can focus more on what the travellers themselves are doing. Um, it, it just means that they can, you know, cause more cause more damage. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, mercenary um, is, a, is a popular um, class, and uh, I think breaking it up in, in, into three books like this is uh, a great way of expanding on that. Uh, it looks like uh, you get about uh, 280 pages ish of uh, content between the the three books and the uh, and the adventure. Um, book book one, uh, Mercenaries in the Far Future, is uh, 121 pages, and then uh, book two, uh, Running a Mercenary Force, that's that's about uh, 50 pages, and then uh, book three um, is a field guide, and that's 100 pages, and then uh, you got a uh, Another thirty-three page adventure, and by the way, the artwork. Uh, this this stuff is loaded with artwork, which I just have to say is fantastic, beautiful illustrations. Uh, kudos to uh, the artists and uh, and to the production uh, team for putting together such beautiful uh, layouts and imagination inspiring um, pictures. I mean, you you may not it may not match your particular view of what you see in your mind when you think about your traveler things, but it shows like a breadth of different things that uh, you can kind of relate to once you see them. Um, so I appreciate that, uh, that beautiful artwork that you um, make sure is in all of your products. <laughs> Great covers. Thank you for saying. Yeah, yeah. that's, um, uh, I mean, in the past, um, We've had a different approach to our work, but um, uh, working at Mongoose HQ now, we've got um, a full team of artists and graphic designers um, who wh whose pace, their, their one goal in life is to make the perfect looking book. Um, we haven't quite got there yet, but we are working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about um, the Spinward Extents. Oh, yes. <laughs> so tell us a little yeah, bit about that. 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 Yeah, that's a strange one. Okay, so we've done um, a couple of other, what we call our sector books in the past. Um, first we did, um, I mean, the first sector we did was the Trojan Reach for, uh, which is within the uh, the Trojan, Re um, the Pirates of Dranax campaign. But the, uh, the full-blown sector books, we got Behind the Claw, um, dealing with uh, the Marches area, and we, we'd recently done Soleimani Front. Um, and it, it looks like this is a good way to uh, tackle sectors because you've got a lot of, they're big books. Um, they cover two sectors. That's an awful lot of playing space. Um, and I've, I've got this long held dream that one day we will cover every sector of charted space. I think it might be a foolish goal, but um, I, 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 live in, I live in hope too that one day we'll actually <laughs> succeed in doing that. Um, and then we had 
gentleman contact us uh, the, by the name of Gear. He said, uh, I've written a complete sector. Uh, I think it's good enough to publish. Would you be interested? Now, we never take submissions like that. Um, normal path to being a, uh, one of the frontline traveler writers is maybe you've done um, uh, a couple of uh, articles for JTAS. They've caught our eye. Um, we say, do you want to write some, um, uh, try your hand at a 32 page adventure? Uh, that looks good. Maybe we start looking at um, a more beefy project. Um, this is the uh, the path that uh, uh, Chris Griffin um, uh, took for Traveller. Um, so Gear comes along and says, yeah, I've got this uh, entire book. Do you want to publish it? And my first thought was, well, no, it's, it's, it's going to be awful. Um, but he sent me the manuscript. And uh, I read through the first couple of chapters and I thought, this is actually quite good. We could We could do something with this. Um, but there's only one sector here. Um, we kind of need two if we're going to make this into a sector book. So he, he went away. I had a little think about that. He says, yep, give me, uh, just give me a few months. I'll get um, uh, the adjacent sector all done for you. And uh, he delivered it. And it was a big book, a very, very big book. We had to uh, strip some of the material out of it, which you'll now find in current set of JTAS volumes that we're, we're working on. But no, that was an amazing feat um, from Gear. It's the first time he'd um, uh, approached us, and his very first project is a massive 300-plus page book. So yeah, that's the story behind that one. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, amazing accomplishment there. Uh, this, yeah, like you say, the, the book uh, is uh, 370 pages. It's got a full uh, index. Um, it's got uh, it's got lots of stuff in there. I mean, like I said, two entire sectors. Plus, um, there's aliens and animals and starships. Tons of like so many ships and uh, oh. uh, deck plans. And um, yeah, it's a great, great book. Um, I mean, Giz, uh, uh when it comes to traveler books, gives someone to uh, keep your eye on. He's um, recently finished in fact we're laying it out right now he's the one behind the new robot handbook um which is basically the robot equivalent of uh high guard uh-huh. and uh his work in that has been absolutely fantastic um he kept uh, a very easy to get to grips with design system for uh for the robots themselves uh-huh he translated every robot we published for Traveller into those um, into the new stats that are generated from it, and they're they're in the robot handbook. He then proceeded to include every variant of robot or cyborg or artificial intelligence that you've ever seen in any science fiction film, book, or series, and it's in there. You can do it with this uh with this book um it suddenly dawned on me when i was i was reading through it um and it was talking about uh artificial intelligences that you can build into a ship and a portion of that um intelligence can then be linked into or placed inside uh, an artificial uh robot body and i realized he'd made um basically ed from mass effect uh -huh. um and the normandy Right. Uh, there's uh, also uh, um, a character on uh, the Andromeda. They have a yes. uh, they have a, a artificial intelligence that uh, I guess can inhabit an android body and leave the ship and come back and dump back into the um, ship system. Yeah, but I mean, there's there's absolutely everything in here. I mean, you could have uh, if anybody remembers the old Blake Seven series. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. um, you've got the computer in the Liberator. Plus, you've got Orac. You can do both with this book. Um, it goes up to um, uh, big, um, uh, I don't know, uh, remote, uh, autonomous, autonomous um, OZA, big construction vehicles, right down to microbots or nanobots. You've got a full design sequence for all the nanotechnology. He's crossed the divide between robots and uh, cybernetics in this book. Um, a traveler can, with the right technology and enough money, they can build a robot body and put their own consciousness into it. 
you can do anything with this book. <laughs> Fantastic. I look forward to it. I have a copy of Robots uh, sitting right here on my desk. I've always been fascinated with robots, and when I saw that uh, Traveler put out a robots book, I bought it immediately, and it's uh, well-worn and, uh, yes, tattered. <laughs> I'll be happy to see what's uh, coming out next. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Third Imperium. Yes. Uh, right, tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, we... I think what the uh, genesis from that was. We had... Um, we've been doing travel for a fair few years now, and one thing people have always come back to us and asked for, what is the generic setting book for Traveller? And it's kind of tough to explain. Traveller doesn't really work that way. I mean, pick any sector book, and that's the... You can use that as the generic setting book, because, um, I mean, Trojan Reach is connected to the Spinwood Marches, but they're both very different sectors in terms of uh, field. So which is the correct one to introduce you to Traveller? Well, you can use either. Um, but people have been asking for a, in uh, inverted commas, uh, proper uh, Third Imperium book covering the uh, the actual empire. So we came up with this uh, idea, perhaps we can do uh, a fairly meaty, meaty book on each of the major empires, and we will include um, one of the central sectors of that empire, because they almost never get touched upon in um, uh, traveller source materials, because people um naturally gravitate well, at least the designers do naturally gravitate to the to the border areas but how fascinating would it be to have a proper look at core sector um so that was the uh the driving force behind um third imperium uh have it as a inverted commas generic uh, uh source book for the traveler universe but also get um core sector out there uh, let's look what life is like right in the heart of uh, the Imperium. Um, and Chris topped that off by doing um, three standalone um, adventures for it as well. It's uh, another very beefy book. Uh, it's over 240 pages. And like the other books, it's filled with uh, alien species and aliens and ships and animals and maps. And uh, it's a, just a complete resource book for Third Imperium. Was it difficult to um, kind of, what do I want to say, bring in all the threads of canon and kind of put them together and decide between them? Like, maybe you had conflicting um, information that you had to just make a decision on? Well, no, I mean, I'll, I'll say no, not at all. But uh, that's because Chris was uh, doing all, all that hard work. Um, <laughs> it's, there's basically um, an inner circle, what we call the inner circle for uh, Traveller. You'll see it credited in uh, the front of just about all the books, um, uh, which ba is basically formed of um, Mark Miller and his most um, uh, trusted lieutenants, so um, I gave Chris access to them, and um, they had all the debates and arguments and rationales to uh, basically bring all of that together. Frankly, I just got to see the uh, the finished cake. I, I I didn't have to get involved in the in the mixing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the entire core sector is covered, so you get the you know sixteen subsectors, and uh, each uh -huh. one's very different. Uh, that you know they all have their different personalities of the subsector, if you will um yeah it's a it's a great great book and a great resource um i'm just so happy with uh all the stuff that's been put out um recently the quality of it and the amount uh you know they're not skinny little books these are beefy books with tons of stuff in it and there's something in there for everybody i mean grab tanks and, and like i said starship yeah. uh starship deck plans and, and new ships and uh, or or things that you know uh, just needed to be detailed, and, that, and now they are, and, that, and, there they, and there they are. And it's an entire background and setting that you can just take and go. Yeah, I mean, we've, um, I think in terms of both the writing and um, the art and the presentation, we are um, firing on all cylinders with um, uh, 
uh, traveler at the moment. Um, but the thing we've been trying to do, and this this started with, um, in part with the uh, first second edition core rulebook we did, uh, but very much so with Pirates of Drenax, is we have these um, like little watershed moments um, in the Traveller production schedule where um, we say, okay, let's make this one the best thing we've ever done ever. Uh, and of course, you have another one of those moments and you've got to take another leap up and it just builds up and up and up and up. So hopefully people are seeing um, uh, a noticeable rise in quality in um, production art and writing um, as we move forward. Yeah, I definitely see it and I appreciate it. So thank you very much for that. Um, so what, tell us about your uh, plans for the next year. Do you have a uh, big uh, traveler products in store? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, right now, the very last chapter of High Guard Update 2022 um, is being written. Um, the rest of the book is um, already done and edited and ready to go. Um, we're just waiting for the uh, Flute Battles um, chapter to be polished off. We should be getting that in a week or two. That's being done by Chris Griffin. And there is a thread on our forums that basically gives a sneak peek. Uh, what's coming out, uh, what's going to be in, in that book. Uh, we are working at the moment on Central Supply Update 2022, although that's going to be around November or December, you see it, so that's still um, some ways away. Aliens of Charted Space Volume 3 is already written um, and just waiting for layout. That's got the BWAPs in it. Uh, also dolphins and my absolute favorite for a uh, player species orca um i fully recommend one person in every group uh that is flying a, a type s scout has an orca player um because i just got this vision that everyone's in the cockpit so the orca is kind of like halfway through the iris valve just poking his head in uh something goes wrong and they need to get to engineering quickly and they can't get past the orca <laughs> um, i mean there's going to be inevitable arguments they're going to say okay you're really big so you're going to live in the cargo hold to which the orca says i'm not living in an orca hold smash a wall through those two state rooms i'll take that um it's, it's just endless opportunities for uh, uh fun of the orca and it's not your fault you're so big is it right right it sounds fun <laughs> <laughs> all right matthew uh um, where can... oh go on go on so I was just going to mention the next big thing um, this is going to be working on is our new big epic campaign. We've done Pirates of Genax, we've done um, uh, Deep Knight Revelation. The next big one is going to be called Singularity, um, which is, it starts off in Core Sector. Uh, basically, someone has created a full-blown AI um and it's uh trying to escape so it's breaking off its consciousness and trying to um escape out of the imperium and the players are going to be very heavily involved in that is is all i can really say Reveal. right now okay. look for um, previews of um that coming up the other product um i'll mention is we've got a new universe for traveler uh which you should see at the bottom end of this year it's called pioneer it's being written by um, uh, a gentleman, I hope I pronounce this right, uh, Sandy Antunes. Um, and it's basically set 10 to 30 years uh, in the future from our time at the moment. And <clears throat> the players will be um, on uh, manned space missions to be the, for example, the first to set up a permanent base on the moon the first to walk on Mars, um, uh, the first to start mining an asteroid. Um, it's very, <clears throat> uh, uses the travel rules, but it's very realistic. And um, there isn't actually a combat chapter uh, in them. You can get into tussles with people, but your main enemy is going to be the environment every step of the way. Look out for that one. All right, fantastic. So um, how can people find you and your products? Or where's the best uh, place to find? 
Mongoose Everything's stuff. on our website, mongoosepublishing.com. All right. Do you have a um, do you have a social media or Twitter accounts? We do. Um, I'm not very good on that side of things, but uh, no. You'll on our website. You'll find links to um, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. Oh, and YouTube. Fantastic. Okay, for YouTube, we've got, we've got a music video there for you. <laughs> great, great. Well, Matthew, we've come to the end of our interview. Thank you very much for having me. It's been fun as always. Well, folks, I'm your host, Frank Sicardi, also known as Cyborg Prime, and I've been talking today with Matthew Sprange of Mongoose Publishing. Matt, thanks for participating in our fourth annual Traveler Mayday Mayday event. I hope, you'll, I hope you will join us again next year. Oh, it's always fun. Fantastic. And thank you, dear listener, for joining us for the fourth annual Traveler Mayday Mayday event. That's all for now, travelers. Until next time, happy traveling. This data crystal will self-destruct in five seconds.